Brittany, and I'm back fixing Suzuki's. It's Brittany, and I am back in the form of a new company, the Michael Scott Paper Company. Welcome to Texas Beard Adventures. I'm Brad Harrell, your host, and today we're working on the Suzuki. I got my favorite mechanic here, old Douglas. Oh, say hello, Doug. Oh, Doug. Kind of expect that from him. We got a problem with a 95 blood wagon. I think it's the uh, fuel pump. Mechanic, what do you think? Justin was always right. Uh, I'm not a mechanic. I never claimed, claimed, claimed to be, excuse me. Uh, but we're pretty sure that's what's going on because the fuel pump you used to be able to hear and it would make this noise that was like, Uh, but now it's not making anything. So we're thinking that the pump burn up. So we got a new one. Where's it at? Set her on the table. All right. So we got us a true grade fuel pump. Is the box open? Yeah. Is it made in China or is that just the box? It don't matter as long as it works. I already took it out of the bag and everything. Oh, look at that. That's pretty. So, tell us the uh, sequence of events that we're going to be doing here to change this fuel pump out. Well, we got to drop the tank, so we're going to have to jack it up, put okay. it on jack stands so we can get some clearance to remove the tank from the vehicle. Okay. And we're going to start by gaining access to the filler neck so that we can siphon the fuel out that might be in there. We don't know yet. Do you always drink Rebel when you work? No, this is actually the first time. <laughs> <laughs> but if they want to sponsor, it's okay. Yeah, if, if you want to sponsor the channel, Rebel, come on with it. <laughs> so, uh, this is a hunting rig. And so I tried to make it kind of as light as possible and then as versatile as possible. One of the things that I did was take this, it was a plastic slash metal bumper. I took that off because it really wasn't needed for anything because it served no structural purpose. Doug said the manual or the instructional the service manual service manual said states, one of the first steps is to remove the rear bumper cover check done step two gain access to the filler neck which is so there's the filler neck and right there is the access so it's got one probably three three bolts in it or three bolt slash screws so that'll be next what you got there what size 10 millimeter <laughs> How many was it? Two? Three. Three? Three, Three little bolts and a sheet metal screw. All right. And that's what takes off the filler neck cover. So that way we can get to the filler neck to drain the tank. Supposedly small difference between two door and four door. Apparently there's a little valve to keep you from sucking fuel out of the two door, which you have to remove after getting the filler neck off. Maybe the four-door has it, maybe it doesn't. 
We gonna find out. All right, so we have got the filler neck taken loose and we have the vent line taken loose. Filler neck is up. There's the filler neck there. There's a hose clamp right here. And then up here is the vent line right there. So quarter inch, um, quarter inch hose clamp on both of them, loosen them up and then pull them off. Okay. Okay, all right, so next step is gonna be disconnecting this U-Haul tow hitch, which I know most people aren't, may not have it. This was a 2,000 pound, weight grows 200 pound, max tongue. And she is an authentic U-Haul. So uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and disconnect that, get it out of the way. Then we'll see about dropping the skid plate in the tank. I usually put, I, I welded this hitch on there with the, with the damn thing on there. And I usually put a couple different attachments on through this receiver. When we go to West Texas, I put a, a cooler rack in here. And I also have a bumper dumper that goes in here and a deer feeder, which is right over there. Anyway, I didn't know that that thing was broke. I'll have to weld that back on. It should be good as gold after that. Look at that. Look at that pretty weld. All right, Doug, what's our next step? So, apparently the four-door does have a valve inside of the filler neck assembly, which allows you to feel the keep come back out. Bad boy out. Oh, I see. Interesting. There's the and filler neck. The yeah, we took these four screws loose. There's four screws. One, two, three, four. Took those loose, pushed it through that hole, took it out. Let's see what's Oh, good. it's a little tight, Brad. It's tight. Yeah, I don't think it's been pulled up. This pug has been pulled out in a while. Well, no. Oh, son of a Separating. Did it really? So what does that mean? It means you pull the other half out. After we get the tank out or what? You see it? Oh, there it is. The ball's still in there. Yeah, that's the other part of the valve. How do we get that out? Probably with the screwdriver and some pliers. You're just a barrel of good news, aren't you? <clears throat> yeah. See that? I shoved that <laughs> down the hole. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we were able to get this out. This is a uh, kind of like an anti-siphon device, right, Doug? Yeah, something like that. But I think we're not going to put it back in because. I would actually prefer to be able to siphon gas out of here, out on the trail at the ranch or wherever. I would like to be able to pull gas out of the tank if need be. All right, so what we got is I've got the negative wire. We've already got the positive wire connected. Doug has a inline pump shoved into the tank, dumping the fuel into a fire, well, into the pink. It's really at a five gallon, but it can hold about six. Okay. So, here we go. Is it going? Is it dumping? Well. So what we're doing here is we are emptying the tank so that way there's no fuel in it when we drop the tank. 
trying to change to reduce a little bit of the weight. Yes. Essentially reducing the weight. Because as of y'all know, plumbing, liquid slushing is a little bit hard to control. Yeah, it is. Without baffles. Once we see air sucking in the clear hose, we're mostly done. This is actually a fuel transfer pump for a mobile home. Is it really? It's probably the one. But, yeah. I'll be damned. You said it made too much noise. Oh, there it is. Sucking air. Look at that. Pretty neat. It's like you've done this before, Doug. No, oh, just once or twice. All right. What's the next step, Papa? Yeah. What is that? This will be a fuel filter. This is the fuel supply line. Now, since the fuel supply line runs on top of the tank, we have to disconnect it from the filter area according to the service manual. It says nothing about this giant dent Brad has Holy here, smokes! Which wow. may be the reason why it did not work. Wow, I never saw that. I may have felt it, but I never saw that. That's crazy. I think crazy. that was about one or two presidentes. Yeah. Beyond the capability realized was I'm going to say maybe two or three presidente. Wow, that's crazy. Eric. I'm not going to say anything, but it's on the passenger side again. I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I for one don't like, I don't have any of those fancy ride on glasses, so I got to keep my head above the splatter zone. Right. If you see any copper washer drop, let me know. I love it when you say stuff like that. Not the armpit! No. You know, some skin is a little bit sensitive still, even after all these years. You got sensitive skin in your armpit? This one's the first one, not regularly exposed to hazardous chemicals. <laughs> <laughs> nice little banjo bolt. Uh huh. Sealed Top. by a copper washer on both ends. Right, 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 right. The other thing I don't like is the smell of fuel. You don't like the smell of fuel? No, I do not. What about the smell of diesel? Any fuel. Any fuel you don't like? Any fuel. So, what do we got going on here, Doug? You aren't able to use an impact on it because of the skid plate, is that correct? This is correct. So he's using a 14 millimeter. Modified skid plate with cordless Milwaukee angle grinder since we're working with an open fuel source. Which I would have no problem doing since it's not my vehicle. Why aren't you using the ratchet end anymore? Because it's too loose? Because I'm controlling the descent. Because I'm controlling the descent. Of the tank. But if you can see right there on the bottom, the skid plate is actually in the way right there. You can't get to it. see my finger. So once we disconnect these two bolts, we'll move to the front. There's two more on either side of the front. And then there's two bolts that hold the tank up in the front. So there's four bolts in the front, two in the back. These two in the back hold the skid plate and the tank. 